And we're back today, and I'm talking about mental health, ADHD, depression, the whole gamut of things. And I found a frightening statistic recently, and it was through somebody that we're speaking with today that is working in the space. Right now, 14 million Americans are currently using amphetamines to deal with things like brain fog, forgetfulness, and just basic things like concentration. So beyond that, another 37 million Americans, around 18% of the adult U.S. population, they're currently using antidepressants. Now, this isn't to be, this isn't to slam antidepressants or anything like that. I certainly have run that whole cycle of things in my early adult years, whenever I was putting my full trust and faith in the um, U.S. healthcare system. And of course, you know, things change and, and people become more enlightened to other ways of living. And that is my goal is to awaken you and inspire you to better ways of living your lives. And today we're going to be talking about plant medicines, fungus, mushrooms, things that I have had an interest in for quite a while. My guest today is Scott Olgram. Scott, you're a company, Synaptic Scientific, and you've sent me a sample of your longevity duo mushrooms that I've been putting in my coffee. And they, they, they taste really good, actually, a little bit like chocolate. I mean, I mix it with ghee in my coffee. But Scott, why don't you just kind of give us a, a brief background on how you got started in the space and, and where you feel like you're providing the most value to people? Oh, well, thanks first for having me on the show, James. I really appreciate that there's a growing interest in this uh, area. So I'm, I'm always pleased when people reach out and say, we, we like this area. We think it's important. So thanks for having me on. Uh, I am the CEO of Synaptic Scientific. We make a very potent plant-based cognitive brain tonic that we believe is the most effective cognitive enhancing and mood balancing formula on the market today. How I got into this line of work, whew, I am 66 years old, so that, that story goes back a ways. My interest in plants as medicine was really the discovery. Well, it, it, I got into it probably the same way that 90% of those that choose to get into this line of work, it's because of the, their own personal health problems as a younger person and the failings of the, as you mentioned, of the pharmaceutical model to really heal on a cellular and regenerative basis, the, the human body, those, those cannot, they weren't designed to do that and they cannot do that because we are a result of the nutrition that we put into our body. So uh -huh. it was really getting turned on to that from early books back in the, you know, again, I'm 66 years old. So these were, were some of the early books back in the 60s and 70s that talked about the diet, health, diet, disease connection. So that's kind of how I got into it. And I had developed skin and digestive problems and the prescription meds, meds that I was given were really hurting me because they're not, you know, they're not nutrients, they're chemicals that trick the body into doing something different. So just to be clear too i always like to say this i'm even though i i'm i'm pissed at the pharmaceutical company in the way that they have presented themselves as solution to things that are in fact nutritional based i am not anti pharmaceutical pharmaceut pharmaceuticals can be absolutely life changing they are perfect for dire situations that keep the body alive long enough to bring in the nutritional support, but we are using the wrong tool for the wrong problem. You know, it's like putting gasoline to, you know, start a backyard grill or, you know, people who are using Oxycontin for a toothache, it's just the wrong tool for the wrong job. So, uh -huh. yeah, you know, and, and like you said, these are all just tools, right? And whenever you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And that's often what you, you get whenever you go to the doctor, you know, they're, they're not, they're not able to write a prescription for mushrooms. Typically, you know, most, you know, but their, their job is to, is to, is to, to apply the right prescription medication to these different conditions. And basically it's just like whack-a-mole a lot of the time. And I try to seek out holistic or, you know, integrative type um, physicians that are familiar with things like this that, that you're working with. So that's right. Let's get into a little bit about what. The, the benefits maybe of some of these things, you know, and you can talk about the sample that I've been putting in my coffee for the last two weeks. And it was a, it was a very nice, very nice big sample. So I really appreciate you sending that. And I'm going to um, order your brain tonic as well. But first, let's talk about the benefits of these 
particular blends of mushrooms. This one you have. Actually, cold- James, can we, can we actually, because of how you started this, can we talk about the cognition formula first? Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Let's, okay. let's, let's get into that and talk, talk about how mushrooms can uh, apply cognitively to our, to our cells. Okay, great. Well, for about 15 years, I'd been teaching people about superfoods. And in fact, I had a 28 day nutritional cleansing course. I wrote four books on the topic. And at one point I really decided, you know, I really wanted to, uh, you know, build my own company. So I was watching this astronomical rise of popularity of stimulant drinks and energy drinks and seeing kids and college students. And then as you pointed out, the the horrific number of people who are on antidepressants Mm -hmm. and or on amphetamine based things for ADHD. And I'd been using plants to, to aid in mental clarity for years. So uh, I, that's what we did. We developed a, a, a product that was the first nootropic that ever got sold in whole foods. And maybe some of your listeners remember a drink called brain tonic. We started selling it in, we got accepted into all Whole Foods in about 1400 other stores in 2008. And it sold for the last, for, you know, for about 10 years in those stores. So that was kind of the basis of it, but I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> you asked me kind of how, how do, how do they work? No, this is all great. You know, and oh, I, good. I was, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, the benefits, like what, what, so. You know, right now we 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 mentioned the statistic of people, all these people on antidepressants and stuff. And this isn't to to urge anyone to try to stop your medications, you know, but to to but to show people that there are alternative ways of living to optimize one's health. So, with with your with your cognitive formulas, which what are the benefits of these, and how can people incorporate them into their lives? Yeah. Okay. Well. Most people are actually familiar with a couple of of plant medicines. I like to call them plant medicines that they probably take on a daily basis. Their parents took them. And one of them is the coffee bean. One of the ingredients, there's actually about 700 known active ingredients in coffee. But the most famous one, of course, is caffeine. And it does work to help cognition. But the whole thing about bot, you know, but the botanical world, there's something like 400,000 plants on our planet. And there are some other well-known plants that have been used by other cultures besides ours for hundreds of years that not only, they're not like caffeine, they're not like the stimulants, amphetamine stimulants, they actually do other as do other things for the brains that are really, really crucial. And they actually help people with ADHD, with focus problems. And some of them actually help with mood stabilization. So for those who are listening to this or watching us and they're, they're dealing with anxiety or depression, there are some plants that are very available. We're actually putting them into our cognitive cognition formula that are good for doing that. So just, just to give you an example of a, of a couple, there's a, uh, there is a seed called Griffonia simplicifolia. That is a mouthful of a word, yeah. but that, unfortunately they don't have a simpler term for it. Griffonia is out of the entire botanical world has the highest amount of precursors of serotonin. Oh, serotonin, as most people know, it, even though the, the, those hormones and those neurotransmitters are a very complex thing in the, our body and in our, in our biochemistry, you can, one of the simple ways of looking at serotonin is it is the feel good chemical that our body produces normally. And when it is missing from people, there is that sense of flatness in life or that sense of depression and sometimes anxiety. So serotonin, a boost in serotonin makes people feel motivated. They want to get out of of their bed. They want to create dreams. They want to go after their dreams. And in Simplicifolia, it has a precursor called 5-HTP. And in fact, Mm -hmm. you can get the chemical version of 5-HTP on Amazon, on any, any natural health food store in the world right now, because people know how it's impact. And the other really cool thing about taking a little bit of this Griffonia simplicifolia seed 
every single day is that it the body when it breaks down the the components inside of that metabolizes that plant it not only gets access to that that precursor to serotonin it's as if the body recognizes it better than it does in any other format so it's giving you the tools to create more serotonin now this is where there is a strong departure between that what i just told you about and pharmaceuticals some pharmaceuticals especially the adhd well actually no not the adhd ones the uh, the antidepressant ones force the body to use up its current serotonin amount it's not giving the body more serotonin it's it's forcing the body's chemistry to get access to the existing serotonin in the body so if you don't have enough serotonin Yes, it's going to tweak the remaining amount in there, but what the body needs is more of that nutrient. And that's what Profonia simplicifolio does. One other aspect about that plant that I find so important is that people who take that plant often report better sleep. Why? People who are listening to this podcast now, James, have them look up where melatonin comes from. Melatonin comes from the breakdown of serotonin. What's well, a hormone? So as it as nighttime starts to come, the body's body's system goes. Where it's getting to be nighttime. We got to start preparing for sleep. So it takes the existing serotonin in the body and metabolizes it into melatonin. And man, that is the effect that just that single plant can have on people's well-being so you know i i was looking at your website here and i wanted to know exactly what was in the cognition supplement so i pulled it up and i'm impressed with this formulation and i'm just gonna uh, and i'm just keeping my my initial impressions i'm not trying to sell anybody on your product or anything but i i was thinking it was just a blend of mushrooms but i was looking at it you've got several interesting things in this and i'm just gonna go and <laughs> The reason I thought it was so interesting is because I'm taking these as a, as a supplement myself. And I mean, I've, I've got a, a whole closet full of stuff, but here's what I, here's what's in your cognition supplement. Bacopa, the, I'm, I'm naming the ones that I recognize. Mucana purins. So how did I, you, did I pronounce that wrong? Pu yeah, you take Mucana. I do. And, and it is a precursor to, I think, L-dopa or dopamine. Correct. I feel a very strong drive whenever I take that supplement. And I, so just, just from those two ingredients on your label, I can tell that you will definitely feel something from this. So I, I'm interested in trying that one. Uh, yeah, very good. I, You're, I'm impressed. Not many people are familiar with Makuna. But, but it also has, has AGP choline. So, you know, choline is a, a neurotransmitter that is used in lots of different things. And, and I, I'll take choline with different things to support, you know, the mm. um, different nootropics that I try. But you know, I'll take, uh, what am I taking? Alpha GPC. It's similar. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, a glycerol phosphocholine. Very good. That's, that's actually, to me, the, the one that is the most bioavailable. So, you know, just because I'm a nerd, maybe talk about one of these. What, what is this? Uh, centella? Yeah, there's a few uh, others. So, so, Celestris panicolatus. There's okay. Centella asiatica. Centellica is also known as holy basil. No, sorry, not holy basil. It's known as gota cola. Gota cola is also a balancer of emotions in the body. Bacopa and Celestros both have the ability to increase brain fluid. So more, more blood movement, more flushing of the brain. And then there's a really interesting one. So I'm bringing it, bringing it up in my mind. Uh, Osimum sanctum. Osimum sanctum is also known as holy basil. Holy okay. basil is yeah. oftentimes used in cooking, but if you mm -hmm. extract it in the right way, you get these fascinating compounds that seem to open up the top part of the brain, which I don't know that much about brain chemistry, but there's definitely one aspect of the brain that, uh, that it opens you up to i guess you would call it your intuition you know as you are tr troubleshooting through the day and you ask yourself what what's your best you know what's my best sense of this oftentimes it's that intuitive hit 
Well, to that, to those, some of us who are dealing in brain chemistry believe that the, it has a nutritional component to it that leads directly to the physical component of the brain. And osimum definitely has that high end note opening up that top part of the brain aspect. So this was, and just so you know, too, you're right. This is a very complex formula, but so it was put together by my partner, who is a doctor and born and bred in Eastern India. And his, he comes from a long line of Ayurvedic practitioners. And he also works with pharmaceutical companies on their formulation. But his real love is with plant-based formulas for this reason of, you know, trying to improve people, trying, you know, trying to improve society and give them a better, better access to a more sane way of looking at and achieving mental health. So I'm going to, I was just looking at your website as you were saying all this, I'm going to order that. And, um, so, you know, just to get into, uh, is any of this studied in research? Is anybody looking at all of it, in a all of it, you bet all of it has fascinating studies that show its positive effect on either uh, well-being, emotions, or on increased function, focus, memory, all of it. Yeah, you bet. All of it has studies that show those results. None of it is just put in there by random. Yeah. One of the things, too, that I think is important for people to get, and it, it only comes, I think, from having done this now for 15 years, being in manufacturing, there is a real difference in how a plant is manufactured. And it has only been in the last few years that plant extraction technology has reached a level where instead of, if you, if you take a dried leaf or you take a, a, a bean or something like that, and then you grind it up and then you put that into capsules and eat it, that's a one-to-one -one potency. Yes. If you press it through something that extracts out something, maybe you get a two or three to potency. Well, with this new technology that we are using on cognition, it's something called supercritical fluid extraction. Uh -huh. And it requires quite a bit of mastery of, of, of machinery and mechanics and fluid uh, dynamics and heat and cold and a bunch of different things that I certainly don't have the ability to pay for, number one. It's a, it's a half a million dollar investment. But there are certain companies now that are able to do this with these cognitive plants. And we are seeing extract potencies of 60 to 1 and 70 to 1. And that's what cognition is based on. Is this so that, very, that very, higher ratio? That higher ratio is what you're looking for in the extraction. Correct. Uh, is that, it's because uh, it, and this, uh, you know, I think perhaps a hundred years ago, maybe you know, our culture and society and humans were would have been fine with a four to one potency. But at this, you know, look at what we're competing against. Look what we're dealing with. Not only in terms of the condition of the earth, but the condition of our brains and the problems we've gotten, the number of people who are dealing with attention deficit, all of that. So 75 to, one, 75 to 1 potency is what the world needs right now. But that's why we think we are the most potent formula right now on the market. You know, I've tried a lot of different mushroom extracts. And, and like you said, there are, there are different formulations, one-to-one, -one, four to one It's, it's hard to, to know, you know, what, what is going to be ideal or what is, what is, if you're pay what you're paying for is actually valid or whatever, but you know, it, something you mentioned a few minutes ago was that y you use the whole fruiting body of the mushroom mm. for people that are just coming to mushrooms. The whole fruiting body is the actual mushroom. And we mentioned briefly before the interview, we talked about how a lot of these companies, or at least the leading companies in this space are using what is known as mycelium. And correct. Whenever you go to look at these companies and they 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 really talk up the mycelium as the right. the ideal product that you should be consuming you know they they yeah. they point to different things so i know that that seems to go against what i would intuitively feel is the most beneficial aspect of you know a mushroom like i wouldn't want to go eat the roots of the the tomato plant no but so so you know i and i and also the mycelium it, it's like a web and I would imagine if they're harvesting mycelium, you're getting dirt in there. 
No, you're not. Because of the way they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. They're able to, there's no, first of all, they're not putting any dirt into anything. That's one of, that's one of its complaints is that they're not farming anything. They are using liquid mediums in steel tanks that are sealed Uh for three to eight days. And they're able to grow this mycelium. And mycelium is is absolutely magical stuff, but it is not. So it's a shortcut for them. So it is exactly a short. It grows pretty quickly. I have some mycelium growing right now, actually, and it and it takes root within a couple of days. So they're That's stopping right. there, and they're not going forward with the yeah. With the fruit and it's thing. also there's no there's no dirt required. There's no acreage required. There's uh-huh. no other than the temperature controlled this inside of that tank. There is no need for a certain environmental controls. So mm-hmm. you are saving time. 30 times uh, a fully fruiting mushroom in most cases takes eight to nine months. Mycelium takes days, less than a week. That's 30 times less amount of time. So imagine. So look, here's the deal. 95% of all American manufacturers that put the word mushroom on their label, if they are saying that it is grown or, or you know, made in the U.S., they are probably using mycelium. There is no U.S. company that has figured out how to grow medicinal mushrooms to scale in a way that they can afford to or present it to the public. All uh, all medicinal mushrooms of really high quality come from Asia, come from Japan, Korea, China, those places around there. All the rest is mycelium. And when it comes to mycelium, all it is is a matter of looking at the potency. And there is no, there is just no comparison when you compare mycelium to the power of the fruiting cap and the spores that come from that fruiting cap. There's just none. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. So what are some other considerations that people wanting to try an alternative plant-based solution for, you know, these things, what should people first look at or consider? Um, well, I think the first thing is to, to, for, I think a lot of people look at plant-based solutions kind of like twigs and leaves and mint tea. They Mm. don't see it as something that could actually work and they roll their eyes at it. The second thing, and so the answer to that is that you haven't tried strong formulas because when you try strong formulas, I, I, I tell people on the website, I challenge you to do just a few drops of cognition and not feel it within 10 minutes. Mm. That's like saying that you're not going to be able to feel a double or a triple espresso. You feel it. You feel Mm. the difference. So, Mm. but it's a matter of potency. And the second thing is, is that people are constantly saying, well, if, if my hospital or my doctor doesn't know about it, why Mm. would, you know, why would this work? Yeah, And, you know, that's just a whole other topic about why they, I, and I would say largely it's because it was how they were trained. Because if you go to other countries, they'll, they'll recognize Celestris Panicolatus as a very good aid for mental clarity, but yeah. none of the Western doctors have been taught that. So, you know, that, I, you know, there are a lot of great doctors out there, you know, and you sometimes great have doctors. to. You, you sometimes have to, to, to mine, you know, the listings for, for physicians that, that think outside of the box and aren't just, you know, yeah. writing the prescribing guidelines, you know, and, and I know the doctors aren't infallible because I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give you a preview of younger adult days. I've, I've sat in 12 step meetings with brain surgeons that smoke crack. So, you know, the doctors aren't exactly, you know, infallible. infallible. They, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So they're just human as well. And there are, you know, I'm I'm a huge advocate for alternative medicine, alternative health and and plant-based solutions like this, because I I have seen a huge impact on my own health just from incorporating mushrooms and various, you know, things, microdosing, um, lion's mane, you know, and and coming upon your formulation here, there's not a lot of people doing this, this formulation at all. And I'm, I'm very interested. I've tried this one. And I want to try this, the, uh, the cognition one. And from the website, it says it's a bit bitter. Is that a sublingual, is that a sublingual application? 
Under yeah, a brain brain tonic comes. I mean, if if we are doing this on video, brain tonic comes in a mm. liquid formula, and it's a thick formula. It's a little yes. bit, I guess, a consistency of like a. Yeah, it's like almost like a milk, you know. So like, shake it like up. That. Like a shake it up, like a milkshake. So you shake it up, number one, just to make sure that you get, you know, good homogenous mix of all the, the yep. aqueous mix in there and the lipids. And then, yeah, we, we, we realized that after months of trying to make it taste better, that people would just have to get, you realize the, the, the best ingredients in the plant world are mainly alkaloids. It's the alkaloids that do the work. And those are all bitter to, at, to different extents. So there's a bunch of different ways. Some people say, what are you talking about? It tastes great. I put it right in a spoon or I put, put the, you know, squirt it straight into my mouth, under my tongue, leave it in there for 15 seconds and swallow it. It tastes great. We do have some flavorings in it. We've got a bit of a citrus flavor to it. You know, and some people find it delicious. Others, though, will find it bitter. So you can mix it with lemonade or uh, orange juice or put it in your smoothie. We just had a friend visit who works in Silicon Valley, and he loves mixing it just in water and sipping it through the morning. But yeah, it's got a bitter taste. You know, I, want, I was pulling up a, a research study here that talks about the anti aging effects of cordyceps and this blend that you sent me the l2 longevity 2 blend i'm all yeah. for anti-aging and longevity so i'm going to link to this study here in the show notes but basically what they found was they measured these these various um enzymes related to oxidation and aging and they and it showed that um it promoted sexual function in mice that had, had even been uh castrated which I thought was really interesting. And of course, it helped downregulate these different um, enzymes that affect, that affect senescence and sort of these zombie yeah. cells. So like th th there is real science behind this. You know, we're not out in the woods just plucking mushrooms from the ground or turning over cattle no. patties or whatever they do. You know, so I'm going to link to these studies. I'm going to, there's also going to be a blog post on my website kind of going into some of the, for the research and clinical studies that Scott has shared with me regarding these. Scott, what is, what are some other things that we would, you know, that you'd like to mention? Boy, you kind of covered them. You know, to me, the, 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 the main things is for people to try out superfoods, look around for, for products that have good potency levels that aren't filled with hype and then give them a try. And you have to find your own, you know, your own way in it. But I would say that that's, the same thing with nutrition. You know, some people mm. find yeah. be, be meat eaters is the way to go. Mm. Others are yep. more plant-based. Others have mm. to be completely off dairies. Others go, you know, a little dairy once in a while is good. So you have mm. to find your own way. But read some of the stuff, the science behind these, because that's what we manufacturers are doing is using the science to, mm -hmm. to direct us in how we're putting these formulas together. You know, and it, to that same note, reading and cognizing the beneficial aspects of, of plant medicines also reinforce the, the effect that you're going to get. Not to say that it's placebo, but, you know, it, it helps to internalize what you're putting into your body rather than Very just much. blindly, blindly consuming products. Right. You know, and what you said about everybody being unique, that is what modern medicine sort of misses. They, there's a, there's a, there's a pill for everybody. And that is the, you know, just applied across the board and that, that we see this, you know, manifesting in ways in society, like, you know, increased loss of language accuracy, divisive behavior, cult-like behavior. I mean, all you have to do is turn on the news and, and, and you can see how, you know, possibly these these behavior type drugs are affecting you know society oh, a lot of these countries with, exactly uh, james i i really industry can't can't they can't patent mushrooms you know no, they not, can't not, not in this way yeah no they can't yeah that's it's interesting you mentioned that about the current state of the union and a lot of it has to deal with a loss of clear thinking and uh, that's a really, I, that was really kind of the, the impulse behind starting cognitive, uh, synaptic scientific was the idea of, you know, what, what if 
we could create a formula that, that in its, in some small way helps people think clear. Yeah. And yeah. It, not only, not only a loss in, in that, but it's, it's something about modern medicine in today's society that, that is driving a wedge between you and, and just yourself and your, your, and, and recognizing what is right for you and, and your relationship from yourself and with the earth. These mushrooms, they have sort of this, this cohesive relationship with, with nature, with earth. Like it, it, I think, you know, the, the mycelium network that these mushrooms grow on, it doesn't this sort of, isn't there a relationship between like the trees and everything is sort of, you know, connected, you know? So, you know, that, that's what really, that's what really in, incites me to, to seek out these plant medicines that, that are more holistic and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that's one of the one of the powerful uh, results of mushrooms, and I don't really understand how it does that in the body, but it does seem to make you feel more connected. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I didn't I didn't tell you I was going to ask this, but I've been asking other guests this recently, and it is mm -hmm. this, and you can take your time to answer it. If you were to put up a billboard in a super busy area, you know, that had tons of traffic. You know, what would that billboard say? It, what sort of message would you try to get across? Oh, wow. You can take your time, Scott. Oh, gosh. That's a, that's a fascinating question. Boy, we are all connected. And the idea that the amount of melanin or the, you know, the tone of your skin has anything to do with you know our differences is bunk mm. we are all connected we are all the same and we all have to work together to figure out how to move forward that would be it so you know i th to that same effect i think that there is possibly and we haven't really gotten into this but i think that you know the the research that is being done the investments that are being made in the space whether that's good or bad the commercialization of it but I think that there is possibly an avenue to um, improving our collective mental health and relationship with one another and realizing our oneness through these different plant medicines, such as you know psilocybin and and things like that, that sort of interrupt that 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 ego that we have, you know, and kind of lift that and allow us to see that you know we are all connected, just like, just as you said, Scott. That's right. That's right. And by the way, I'm glad you mentioned psilocybin. One of the things I used to do in the 90s was do workshops with a man by the name of Ralph Metzner. Ralph Metzner was one of the original group that came out of the LSD movement back in the early 60s with Ram Das and some of the others hmm. during that period. And he, he just passed away a few years ago, but he used to surreptitiously offer you know, the, his skills in that realm. And he would come to events where, you know, sort of a very discreet group of people would get together. And when I lived in Colorado, I hosted him a few times. And that was one of the things, obviously, that he was a big proponent of is using entheogenic plants mm -hmm. of the world yep. to open our minds to our connectedness. All right. My guest today was Scott Olgram. His company is Synaptic Scientific. You can find him at synapticscientific.com. The product that I've tried of his is the L2, the Longevity 2. It contains cordyceps and reishi spores, which I thought was tasted really good. And I've been putting it in my coffee and will continue to do so here for a while until I run out and re-up through Scott. And I'm going to be trying his brain tonic. So I'm going to put links in the description here. You have links to the studies regarding these compounds and these mushroom extracts on my blog. And you can find more with Scott on his website, like I said, at synapticscientific.com. Scott, thank you so much for joining me. I, I, I really appreciate it, all the information. I'm a huge nerd about mushrooms, anything to do with plant medicines. Thank you again. You're welcome, James. Thanks for having me on.